Hi, right, morning, morning. Welcome, everybody. Monday morning, end of May. Uh, yeah, year has disappeared on us, you know, and I think this morning we're talking about uh, one of Tobisa's uh, heroes, so uh, if I recall correctly. Um, well, maybe not heroes, but certainly someone who inspires to be so uh, from time to time, and, and and he loves to quote him. So Trevor believes that the men's uh, uh, should be discounted for some reason, but we'll wait for Trevor. He seems to be trying to make his way in this morning, but obviously the traffic uh, held him back a little bit. So to be so, Nietzsche, who is he? Why is he? What is he? What did he? Does he? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> All right, um, Friedrich Nietzsche is a German philosopher, you know, he was born in the 18th century. And Nietzsche's philosophy is grounded in, you know, psychology and human nature. You know, he was like a pro when it comes to like human nature. He could like decode the human psyche, you know, and actually write based on that. Um, Nietzsche was like a fan of Arthur Schopenhauer, you know, um, but he doesn't agree with his work because, you know, like, Schopenhauer is so, like, dark and pessimistic and, you know, all this nihilism, like, man, like, the real downer, like, Schopenhauer. So, like, the philosophy of Friedrich Nietzsche is like a spin, you know, to um, Schopenhauer's philosophy in the sense that he's more positive, you know, um, Friedrich Nietzsche and his philosophy actually talks a lot about, you know, self-realization, which is a very big thing for me, you know? I think that Nietzsche was like a genius, <laughs> you know, for the mere fact that he actually predicted the 21st century, you know? I can actually see what he was talking about. I think that is so amazing, you know, because he was born in the 18th century, but he could correctly, you know, spot where the 21st century was going, you know? Um, he saw that the human soul or spirit was actually in danger, you know, and he saw that it will be under threat, you know, like happiness and all that. He saw depression and he saw, you know, the decline of Christianity at the hands of its own morality, you know. He actually saw that, he predicted that, you know, and it is what I'm saying, is what I'm seeing in the world, you know. He saw the loss of morals, um, ethics, and meaning in the West, you know. He saw that man would actually be passive, and he would actually be swept away by novelty after novelty, you know. Um, we see it today, we, we see it today, um, man would rather just sit on the couch and just eat potato chips, you know, and consume pornography and order fast food, which is like, like that, you know, it's so fast. There is no process in the world anymore, you know? And when man feels like he's no longer a collaborator, you know, in his life, nihilism becomes a thing, you know, because you don't trust yourself anymore, you know? Instant gratification has actually stolen the process in life, you know? Um, we see this every time, like, even with Netflix, like, entertainment is so, we are so dominated by our impulses. I always use the Netflix, you know, um, example, because a lot of my friends, you know, instead of actually doing something, you know, they actually binge watch Netflix, you know, and it is something that I think that it, it is a hindrance, you know, to self-actualization, you know, Nietzsche saw everything. He saw the depression, like I said. He saw the pills. He saw the social anxiety that's like going on in the world. You know, um, man is actually controlled by by pleasure. He likes, you know, social media. You know, the likes actually validate him. You know, everything, like I said, experience. You know, but you know what I like most about Nietzsche, you know, is that for all these things, you know, for all these negative things that he actually forecasted, he has, you know, a solution. Isn't that wonderful? I think that's like wonderful, you know, because he has a way that can actually get us to a place where we can actually push, be better, you know? 
Trevor talked about, you know, <laughs> the Nazis actually um, taking in the, the work of Friedrich Nietzsche to actually push their agenda, right? Um, I understand why that happened, you know, because Friedrich Nietzsche's philosophy is actually like very big on self-realization, being the best that you can be, you know? And Hitler at the time was like very busy with genetics and just trying to assemble the perfect German, you know? Um, his work is not, let's not affiliate Nietzsche's work with, you know, the Nazi because um, it's not it, you know? Like, no, like his work doesn't go with Nazi ideology, you know? It was just a reference because his philosophy is so powerful, you know? His works, Nietzsche, they inspire the individual, you know? I'll talk about one of his quotes, which is like Amufati. Amufati, which translates to the love of fate, you know? It means that be grateful with your life right now because this moment right now is all that you have, you know? Um, love your own life, you know? And strive to make it better from there. Love what you have. Be grateful for everything that you have and just be the best that you can be. Don't try to be someone else, you know? Um, Amufati teaches us to be grateful for life, to be better than we can be, you know? Um, don't wish that your life, um, don't wish your life, don't wish that somebody's life was your life, you know? That's what Amufati is about, you know? And then we have what we call the Superman, you know, the Uberman, you know. Nietzsche actually advises his readers to actually be the Uberman and stop being passive, you know. When you are the Uberman, when you are the Uberman, when you are the Superman, you actually, you know, dominate your life, you know, you are accountable for everything about your life, you know, responsibility, you are there are no excuses, you know, you do what you can to actually succeed. You are better than passive. You are above passive. You are above great, you know, you are above men. Men is passive. Men binges on Netflix and eat potato chips, but the Ubermensch doesn't do that. The Ubermensch actually has down, has his goals, you know, the goals are actually written down, you know, and he actually strives every day to get to his goal, you know. Nietzsche has this big thing that you should actually strive to become who you could be, you know? So I think that Nietzsche is like, wow, great, you know? And there's this quote, one more quote, you know, um, that is so like, of course, controversial. <laughs> God is dead, you know? But what it means, you know, from Nietzsche's lens is that is about account accountability, responsibility, you know. Again, no one is coming out to actually save you, you know, so you must build yourself, you know. No one is actually going to construct a bridge for you to cross on the river of life, you know. You must actually do that for you, you know. So that is what the quote dead as God is all about, you know? Um, it is about being the best that you can be, you know? Nietzsche is a favorite of mine because he teaches me that you shouldn't feel, there shouldn't be any pity, you know? Life is something that is wonderful. Something that Oops, we seem to have lost the piece of the, are you still with us? Uh, looks, looks, looks like his link is gone, unfortunately. Uh, okay. All right. Well, that was quite an amazing introduction, wasn't it? So, uh, uh, if you're not a Nietzsche convert by now, well, I just don't know. So, Trevor, you've got to switch off all those horrible TV news channels that you binge on and uh, chuck away those potato crisps and uh, start enjoying life. Uh, so, Trevor, yeah, I think we have to switch across to you after that. No, Trevor can't find the on switch. So yeah, we uh, uh, I think it's a problem. 
Did Mitsu have anything to say about on switches or unmutes, uh, to be so? I mean, you know, all these other amazing things he predicted, but uh, <laughs> there we go. Trevor finally found the answer. Yeah, I'm struggling. I'm struggling here. Uh, I wanted to try and get something up on the screen, but uh, it don't. Uh, let me give it another whirl. Now, look, uh, I was quite amazed uh, to actually get into Nitschke. Um, uh, purely because to be so just inspires me no end, uh, the amount of knowledge that he has. Um, and so I went in to see if I could read a couple of Nitschke's uh, works quickly. And then I found out that he had about 1,040 of these blooming works. So I went back to my standard, simple one, two, three. Uh, and uh, it, it was very interesting. Uh, so some of them, I was hoping to try and get a screen up for you. I'm going to give it another world just to uh, see if I can get something up for you. If not, I'll have to try and talk from memory, uh, which is a big problem for me. Uh, and this was the link. In fact, you know what I'm going to do, Ivan? I'm going to give you the link. Uh, let's just do this. Where are we? And then you can bring it up because I can't find the blooming thing. Okay, so, um, and, and in fact, this led me to, to quite a neat uh, site uh, called Big Think, which is the direction that Wisdoms is about. Um, and that Wisdoms is not to teach you or what to think, but to give you uh, the ability or to help you with information that helps you to think. And I love, I love this. Um, because there are a couple that talked of the top 15 aphorisms um, that they extracted from Nitschke. And uh, the top one, apparently, is what does not kill me makes me stronger. Um, but it was, uh, that is, the interpretation of that tends to be that uh, people have got to actually suffer to ex actually experience life. And uh, now I'm not in total agreement with that. Um, I think you've got to experience to experience life uh, and that, that it just depends on um, what type of experience that you're actually going through uh, and that no matter where you are, uh, perhaps it's this attitude of gratitude that uh, for you just to be living uh, compared to those that, that are not, um, uh, you've got to be grateful for that. Um, then there's, if you go down a little bit more, uh, yeah, I like that one about the Englishman because it reminded me of, uh, of Ed, um, and it was somewhere along the lines of, uh, man does not strive for happiness, only the Englishman does that. So uh, that was something like that quote, what um, uh, mad, mad Englishman and people in aeroplanes or something uh, was a sort of... Um, First World War type of, of quote, um, man does not strive for happiness, only the Englishman does that. Um, I think uh, there, I think he, he gets it wrong. Uh, I think uh, from my perspective, uh, the reason that the vast majority of, of people really seem to be negative about life is that they're unhappy. Um, so maybe the flip side of that coin is um, that seeing unhappiness is really a recognition that people are striving for happiness, but that happiness means different things to different people. Uh, for some people, it, uh, it is, man, I want to grab all the power and all the money in the world. Uh, for others like Ed, it's just to uh, put a pair of tackies on, a uh, shoelace, and leave the front door and go off running. And I must say, I did that this weekend. Uh, so it was quite chilly, and I, I didn't plug the laptop in. Uh, I just went out with family, and we had a fantastic uh, weekend, uh, starting off in minus two uh, degrees here in South Africa. Absolutely crazy. Uh, what else was there that I actually picked up from, from Nitschke? Manny's uh, got too much work. I, I think, uh, you know, I wanted to push uh, Tabisa's buttons on, Fridays, uh, on Friday, and I said, uh, Tabisa, Nitschke got it wrong. And that was just to try and pull 
the the three legged stool out from under to be so that where he's sitting there just to get him to think what is he trying to do by following this guy Nitschke. Um, and I was also quite informed by watching a documentary on the Curiosity Channel, uh, which took me down the direction that um, much of what Nitschke actually wrote was misinterpreted. And it was deliberately misinterpreted from what I can read. And I, I've read quite a few studies from guys in Harvard and Stanford uh, and their works. It's quite interesting how much time has been put into analyzing this guy. Um, and much of it seems to have been when he died uh, in, um, in this uh, asylum, it was his sister that actually took, uh, took over his works and that she decided she didn't like the way that things were being written about her in those work, works. And she actually uh, just spiced them up a little bit. Uh, and that is the information that was taken up by the Nazi regime uh, that they used. Um, and, and that's where uh, I think it is, is well exposed uh, that it wasn't his work that was taken up, it was his work was twisted uh, by those. So, um, well done, Tobiso. You made me actually do some homework, and I don't like doing homework. That's why I had to switch off my blooming laptop and go and have a break. <laughs> All right, thanks. Thanks, Trevor. So, Jasper, how do you follow up on those two? Well, I, to be honest, I did nothing on Nietzsche this weekend. I had too much of a busy weekend, but I did follow the, uh, what was it, Show Max, or there was a, or on, on some other series on him and Karl Marx and people of that time. So I did watch those biographies. Um, and uh, I think I don't want to speak on him specifically. I'd uh, rather want to just uh, explore a thought and the power of a thought uh, at the right time or the wrong time in the right or the wrong hands. Uh, because, uh, you know, he's not unique in the fact that he philosophized about life. Uh, today, we just focus on him, but how many of people who philosophized was then taken uh, and almost abused, uh, you know, even, even the words of Christ, uh, the Bible, uh, in the hands of the Roman Catholic and the Pope in the dark Middle Ages, uh, it was their power base to keep people ignorant and, and exploited. Uh, but there's nothing wrong with the, the, the words of, of Christ. Uh, so for me, it's almost, uh, how do we distinguish for ourselves? Are we being manipulated by forces, uh, you know, nowadays, uh, I, many years ago, I learned for the first time about subliminal thinking. Um, and uh, we were impressed with what they did with the old movie theaters. And then let's say it's a, a 30 frame per second. And the 30th, 30th frame would be a picture of Coke and chips. Um, and then come uh, come the break time, people queue up for the Coke and chips because they were subliminally hammered by that picture of Coke and chips. Now, that was subliminal thinking in its crudest form. Today, we are really programmed from all social media by, by its nature is to, to change thinking. Uh, and we've all seen it how you know, you, you look for fishing gear and, uh, on, on internet and the, mo the next moment you are targeted by algorithms that just show you all kinds of fishing and fishing gear and stuff like that. So, uh, so, so from that perspective, it's almost to say, uh, look, there was a lot of bad in the world and they all used some sort of a thought or a cause or a something. Um, and uh, it, the Nietzsche's and the Marx and the Lenin's and the Stalin's and the Mao Zedong's and uh, Idi Amin's here in Africa. Um, and in, in our own good time, you just open up the newspapers on a daily basis and you see the uh, ridiculous arguments that um, uh, 
uh, our friends uh, who was a president president once with a, a letter Z in front of his name um, are still using to, um, to to try and justify just stupidity. Um, so, so for me, it's rather to say you will always recognize a fruit by its tree, a, 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 a tree by its fruits. Sorry, there I got myself like a tongue twisted. Um, so the power of a thought is not in the moment. It's what what is the result behind it. Um, and so so when it's twisted and uh, uh, and its its purpose is to uh, control, to uh, exploit, um, and it's about the quick fix, the me, my, and I for now, because all these people had their uh, promises of quick fix in a way that in our lifetime, in the next five years, in the next 10 years, and people buy into that because they are looking for the Messiah. They are, they are looking for this quick fix, um, and nobody wants to put in the miles and put in the sweat to become that next pioneer generation. Whereas good is always about you don't see it in the moment. You, uh, it's only in hindsight that you see the result of that uh, ongoing good actions that you've taken. Um, so for me, it's uh, the the power of the th of the thought is does it result? So what is it, the, the the fruit on the tree? Does it result in uh, more control, more exploitation, more disempowerment of people by selling them uh, the fake? quick fix solution, or is it about being truthful with people that it takes hard work and energy, but there's accountability in the system, there's empowerment, everybody has a chance to become better, and uh, the results are seen often in your lifetime, but only mostly uh, in, in hindsight. And there's a little nice picture that I want to uh, just, uh, let me just quickly take the screen, um, show you. And someone sent it to me. I don't know if you guys can see it. But he said it's a, uh, and we were talking about the work of pioneers in this world. And uh, he, he said this picture illustrated best for him. So the pioneer is just forging ahead into a dark unknown. Um, and uh, he's riding a horse and there's, you know, there's light and flames where he is on the horse, but he just sees the dark in front of him and it doesn't make sense. But the if you're a pioneer for good, then behind you, you'll start seeing the beautiful trees, uh, the beautiful flowers and the green come up. Um, so I think in a way, we are all probably called to be pioneers and we go into an unknown future. The fact is, what is behind you? Uh, is it hopefully a beautiful scenery, beautiful green, or is it in the case of all these people we've mentioned, the, the Marxists and the Lenins and the Stalins and the, the Nietzsche's and these people, uh, and like Trevor said, maybe the, let's not blame Nietzsche, but uh, are we seeing behind them the Hitlers, uh, the bloodshed, uh, the exploitation of masses and stuff like that? So, yeah, I think uh, even our own lives will be... Uh, judged not by what we say. We can say whatever we say on platforms like this, but it's about uh, the results. All right, Niska is dead. Long live Jasper Kluti. Uh, <laughs> all right, so Lee, can you pick up on those and uh, interpret for us from the philosophies of Lee Harrison? Um. So I definitely didn't know what the topic was, and I certainly didn't do any homework on Nietzsche. <laughs> but um, it's interesting that I have been contemplating and thinking about uh, my presentation for the Wisdom's uh, Global Leadership Masterclass, which is happening on the 17th of June. And the the... <laughs> The target audience are, uh, are, you know, CEOs who, but not just um, any old CEOs, the CEOs who have been there, done that, 
you know, done the Harvard leadership schools, um, have, have seen the good, the bad and the ugly uh, and are a little bit uh, maybe cynical, arrogant, that, that's how they've been described. Uh, and, and so what is it that I can bring? Uh, and the temptation for me was to research, okay, you know, what do CEOs need? Uh, find a book, you know, you know uh, understand the, the, the philosophies of the book and come up with some great um, philosophy that will prove that I'm worth my salt uh, to be able to present something of value to these uh, men and women who I somehow need to impress. And I've had to dial back from that, dial back, dial back, Lee, and be myself. Uh, because that, at the end of the day, is all I can be. <laughs> I can't be anybody else other than my own experience, my own uh, authenticity, and my own story. And I have to trust that if I'm true that story and, and who I am, um, that there will be some connection to the authenticity and the humanness and the story of the other person, no matter how up the ladder they think they are, or no matter how jaded they may feel. Uh, so, yeah, so that's, that's, I think that's me in a nutshell, in, in maybe in responding, I was, con I connected mainly to what Tabiso was saying and um, it just made me realize I've been on that journey. And at the end of the day, the big philosophical questions remain the same. They, they haven't changed in, it feels like millennia. Who am I? Where am I going? What is the purpose of my life? <laughs> Those seem to be the basic questions that we wrestle with always. Thanks, Lee. So yeah, nothing keeps on changing. Uh, so Ed, <laughs> where do we go from here? Yeah, I, I was going to use the NEL uh, protocol to deviate and talk about Bruce Fordyce. Um, I think people on here know who Bruce Fordyce is, but just in case anyone's listening to the recording, you know, he's a, leg a running legend in South Africa, having won the Comrades Marathon nine times. Um, but now his knees are knackered and he can just about finish a park run. But I don't think that takes anything away from his achievements. It doesn't detract from the fact he won Comrades nine times. And Nietzsche went mad towards the end. Well, he went mad for a long time, but that doesn't distract, you know, his mind was knackered. That doesn't distract from his greatness earlier on, just like Bruce Fordyce. And of course, one of the things that Trevor had against Nietzsche was that he went mad. And he seemed to discount what Nietzsche did before. And I'm glad Trevor did his research and sort of got over his Nazi thing, um, which was great. I think it was really good. My favorite, and, and I was amazed when I did my research, how many Nietzsche quotes there are. There are probably more Nietzsche quotes than anyone else, which was amazing. Um, and I thought uh, Tabizo's summary was, was, was brilliant, really, really great. But my quote is, how little it takes to make us happy, the sound of a bagpipe. Without music, life would be a mistake. And <clears throat> Nietzsche wasn't anti-materialism, but he thought that pleasure and happiness came from things like music and dance and the arts. And that particular quote comes from a book called The Twilight of Idols. And it's got a subtitle, which is, or how to philosophize with a hammer. Um, and, and this is where we encounter a slight problem in that Nietzsche was writing in German. 
And that title is a kind of play on words to a, a, a Wagner opera, which of course you don't get when you translate it into the English. And, and I think we have to bear that in mind that some of the stuff we're reading comes from a culture and a language that is different from our language. For example, um, oh, I've forgotten the word. There's, uh, the Germans have a word for um, getting pleasure out of someone else's discomfort, schadenfreude. There is no word like that in the English language. And there's no word zeitgeist in the English language. And zeitgeist is a wonderful word, which means, you know, of the moment. So we have to, 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 to bear in mind that we're, 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 we're not hearing Nietzsche's words. We're hearing Nietzsche's word through a filter, which distorts. But I still think, you know, that what the, the, the whole, the, the book, The Twilight of Idols, was really about a, a lot of stuff, but there's one particular chapter which is about love and enmity. So love being about the spiritualization of sensuality, but enmity, I can never say the word, it's really the uh, spiritualizing the state of having opponents because having opponents helps us to define and strengthen our own position. Lee very often quotes the thing about steel sharpens steel. I think the original quote is iron sharpens iron, which comes from Proverbs in the Bible, which is quite interesting because Nietzsche was very anti-religion. Um, so I thought that was really interesting actually. And, and, and he's right, isn't it? If you have people to spar with, it sharpens your own position. And, and I'm sure that's what happened between Tobiso and Trevor. That's certainly what happens between Trevor and me. Um, so that was really good. Um, and and, I, and I've, I was drawn to that quote, I think, because I was scrolling through loads of quotes and getting quite bored that there were thousands of them, millions of them. Um, because on Friday, I popped on my Facebook memories a picture of, or two pictures of me on Dartmoor. One, I was standing in a um, stream with my rucksack on. I think I had waterproof socks on, so I was quite happy. And the other one was me hugging a tree. And when I shared that memory on Facebook, I put a little thing saying, it doesn't take much to make me happy. You know, and I think Nietzsche was right. And, and he talks about people that are materialistic never actually getting to where they need to be because they keep wanting more and more and more. And that's why he says music and dance. And I think one of his quotes is something like, a day without dance is a mistake or something. Um, so I really loved that bit. <clears throat> and it doesn't take much to make me happy. Uh, Trevor's quite right, yeah, but Mataki's on, disappear out for a run. I'm the happiest boy in the world. And actually, I'll. Saturday, I went for a walk with my daughter. Well, actually, before that, I gave her a hug. The first time I've hugged her in a long while. And that made me so, so, so happy. And then we went for a walk along the canal, and that made me happy. But there's one problem I've got with Nietzsche. There's a, there's a race in the UK called the Grizzly. It's 22 miles through some of the toughest terrain you can imagine. And the guy that organises is a weirdo. And he's called the Long Green Running Bean. And along the course are all these signs with weird sayings. And then in the woods, there's a, a, a Buddhist temple you run through with prayer flags and goodness knows what. There's a guy in a bear suit stands along the, the route. And at one point, there's a Scottish bagpipe player at the top of a hill. Now, I always think that's a mistake. I never understand that. Because if he was at the bottom of the hill, I'd run up the hill faster. Because I think the sound of bagpipes is the worst thing in the world. So how on earth Nietzsche could say how little it takes to make us happy 
the sound of a bagpipe. The guy obviously needed his brains testing. Uh, all right, well, I don't know what I can add to all of that, but uh, uh, other, other than just to say, go and be an Ubermensch. Uh, be the best you can possibly be, I think is, uh, for me, probably the most profound thing he ever said. So I'm going to just leave it at that because I think everything else has been said. So uh, topic for tomorrow. Lee, where are we? Um, I, I'm interested to, to, you know, Edward spoke about bagpipes, God forbid, but um, music and dance. And this last week, um, there was this little sliver of time or sliver of time that there was a, a, a musical theater and performance was allowed. Uh, and now, of course, it's, you know, we're back, back in, in, in various types of lockdown. And my daughter directed a, a small show uh, that was held at a theater. And these were musical theater performers. And honestly, it was so enriching just to listen to music, to uh, participate in uh, hearing passion. And um, it was just wonderful. And it made me, and as we were talking now, it just made me wonder whether we should, could we talk about the, the role of the arts or the role of, uh, yeah, the role of the arts, whatever that is, whether it's music or physical art or whatever it is, what, it, what is it, why is it so important to us? Um, and uh, what, what does it do for us? So how does that sound? All right, good, good. So tomorrow we're gonna roll the on and talk about art. the arts, sorry? We'll be arty farty tomorrow. Arty farty. Well, I, I was going to say say that, and I thought, no, I better not go down that route. But you've done it for me. <laughs> so <laughs> what can what can I do? So yeah, to, we're going to have the old uh, 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 arts talk about uh, the arts tomorrow. So <laughs> we'll see where that goes. <laughs> All right. Have a great day for the folks, and we'll see you on tomorrow. Cheers, now.